Well, the crowd is growing. Their chants are getting louder. You can see just how many people have filled a Rosa Park circle. And we're going to actually keep walking down here so you can see a lot of the signs we can't show you because they're not appropriate for television. Well, this ice may look thick enough, but it's only a couple of inches. And you can see just by walking on here how slushy it is. Eastern and Oakdale is still blocked off tonight. Now, one of those victims, here's what we know right now. One of those victims was found at the party store here. O and E, the other one found not even a block north, just down the street there with some of the police lights that you still see. The video that came out on Access Hollywood uh, when uh, Trump uh, had some of those remarks, you said specifically uh, that Trump should step down. Now, how are you feeling? Police are calling the death suspicious because the man's body was found about 8 to 10 feet inside these bushes, daringly confronting potential sexual predators after posing as an underage teen online. Police do have M40 blocked off right now. It is difficult to see, but about a half mile down behind me is where crews are still working to uh, clear the scene right now. Did you do like the, where you put the front brakes on and shoot? I wanted to. I thought about it. I thought about it. Watching the videos for the first time of his brother's last moments alive, Artura Dunnigan is disgusted. I don't think, I don't even see how they didn't see it was something that was drastic to him. That he, because he ain't the type that just really just went to hospitals just to see what's going on there. Something wrong with it, he going there. Court documents show 57-year-old James Dunnigan was cleared from Bronson Methodist Hospital after being treated for chest pain. Said he wanted to go to jail, but didn't cooperate when an officer asked him to leave. You can see in the video from the morning of May 6th, Dunnigan's legs buckling as officers try to get him into the police cruiser under arrest heading to the Kalamazoo County Jail. Dunnigan falling to the floor. What's wrong with you? All right. Can we just get his uh, discharge papers so we can show the counter receiving? Because they're going to look for every reason to bring him back here. And how they act after. He's got a Lansing tether unit, so parole violation. That's a good one. Yep. Which is probably why all of a sudden his legs went to spaghetti. He said his legs went spaghetti. Yeah, that's because he can't walk. In the video, Arturo says it shows blatant disregard for his brother's quickly deteriorating health and even disrespect for James as he says they make fun of him. That's good. Just love my dude. Come on. Yeah. James like a grown yeah. Oh, it's yeah. stupid, all right. Oh, we picked him up, put him in the chair, wheeled him out. I'm like, yeah. did you do like the, where you put the front brakes on and shoot? Yeah. I wanted to. I thought about it. But it gets worse. Hey, can we sit you up in this chair, please? Come on. He's on the floor. Come on. Let's get you up in this chair. As Artura watches officers pull over and try to get his brother James to sit up, who's barely blinking. It's foaming at the mouth. Right? He's foaming at the mouth, man. That's not responding. He ain't said a word. What the hell? Trying to light his eyes, he's at least responding. Oh, you're fine. Look at you. You're fine. This is you're acting. Less than an hour later, at the Kalamazoo County Jail, James Dunnigan was pronounced dead. So this is too much to watch. Yeah, I don't even really want to watch it all. Man, I know he was so alone, man. He made clear that he was looking for an underage girl for sex. The videos start off with the graphic details. He said that he hates condoms, and if you want one, you bring it. No perfume, please. Skirt with no panties would be hot. The online conversations about when, where, and the sexually explicit acts the predators believe is about to take place with an underage teen. This is this is you though, Eric. Wait. This? Does that look like you? Who is this guy? What do you want from me? And then the confrontation and surprise when the alleged sexual predators find out who really it is they've been talking to. Little do they know they're being filmed. 
I gotta go. You gotta go? Where are you going? You gonna meet another little girl? Is, is that where you're going? I have to go home. Where you, why? I thought, I thought you wanted to do this, right? Well, it was a bad idea and... So why'd you show up? Because I'm a First of all, we have an individual who's basically doing police work. Uh, he's not trained. He's not equipped. It's a, it's a dangerous practice. Extremely risky behavior, Sergeant Terry Dixon with Grand Rapids Police says, that's resulted in seven people facing felony charges. Nice After the man behind the videos turned over his log of the online chats and them. video confrontations to police in February. This guy said that he's always wanted to have sex with a virgin and that he has many sexual fantasies that have yet to become realities. We wanted to find the man behind the YouTube channel that's gone viral, but he wasn't home and hasn't returned our calls. Who's this? Uh, me. Yeah? What are you here for? Uh, what it says. Yeah, let's go a little bit away from the road. Hey, where it's safer. You're in big trouble. Yeah, this is about big. what I figured. The videos you've seen so far all posted within the last few months, but 24 Hour News 8 found a second YouTube channel called Sly Stinger and this video confrontation. Wait, I gotta talk to you. The Department of Homeland Security tells us it helped lead to a separate arrest in 2014. He needs to sit down with an attorney and make sure what he's doing is legal. He has to understand that if this is something he wants to do, he can go through training like the rest of us and he can go become a law enforcement officer and do this the right way. This undercover citizen says on his website, he's just an average person hoping the issue was taken more seriously by showing the realities of child sex crimes and catching potential predators in the act. That's it? Nothing? I don't know what else to say. You think it's pretty disgusting? Yeah, right? it's not right. I can't put it into words, but... What that really meant to me. Lying in his bed during his final days of life battling leukemia, 51-year-old Bob Chambers still has enough in him to express his gratitude. It's just unbelievable. You know, they didn't have to. They didn't. There was no need for them to. Yes, they, they did that. Bob is talking about one of his proudest moments of his 18-year-old daughter, Bethany, when the living room he's staying in turned into a graduation stage last night as she received her diploma at their home in Rockford. When I found out that he wasn't going to make it to my graduation, it was kind of crushing because him and I are best friends. So it was like, I'm going to miss out on all of this stuff that we're going to not be able to do together anymore. And so Bethany's mom made a call to Rockford Public Schools that changed everything. I got a call back uh, around one o'clock from the principal at the high school saying um, we've got far more than a, than a certificate for you. We're going to do her full graduation. In just hours, Bethany in full robe received her diploma in front of her favorite teachers, coaches and her dad. It was just great because I knew that it was going to be one last thing that he wasn't going to be able to like be there in person for. Because I know he's going to be there in spirit. For him to get to see that and for her to have the memory of that her dad saw her graduate was just beyond words. One more memory for father and daughter as the Chambers family cherishes its final moments with the man they love. Are you proud of Bethany? Oh, so much so. I've had a from day one.